I haven't done the introduction in a while, so I didn't get all the right cues in place. Um, apologies for the slight late start. Um, we seem to be, people are probably dragging their feet getting here this morning. So um, we just wanted to give an extra few minutes. Um, but I will start with the introduction so long. Um, my name is Benedicta Matlangu, and I'm the executive for the ease of doing business at the Saldana Bay IDZ. Um, for those who are joining us for the first time, the Togasi series, um, it's actually an acronym for Talks on the Oil and Gas Services Industry, an initiative that has been started at the Saldana Bay IDZ in 2015. So we've been, this is our second year running, and um, today is actually the final session for this year. Um, with the aim to educate the business community of Saldana Bay about the upstream oil and gas and services um, industry and what to expect with the great development that's coming into this region and um, as well as, you know, give almost like the background, the context to the sector, what is this oil and gas industry and how they can partake in it economically for local job creation and economic development in the region, which is Saldana Bay Municipality, as well as the West Coast. I just um, wanted to uh, make a, a special mention. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna introduce our speaker a little bit later on, um, but we have, um, for the purposes of today's discussion, um, in, invited um, certain key stakeholders which we feel would benefit tremendously from this message and um, help us as the Solana Bay IDZ to craft a way forward with regards to clustering. Um, for those um, who had attended in Togasi Series 4, I gave a presentation on clustering, but it was very much um, focusing on how um, businesses in the area can come together, in, be it in accommodation, if you're offering a, a small service, um, that in, in that kind of space of clustering together, you better your chances of success. And I even uh, stole actually a line from uh, the Norwegians um, from a presentation that I had attended in Port Elizabeth where it said that cooperate where you can and compete when you must. And that was a message I was trying to drive. So um, today we're speaking on, a, I would say, the, the advanced version of the clustering uh, topic. Um, and we have then in our midst um, joining us as well is um, some of our colleagues from the Innovation Norway. Um, so, um, and our uh, guest speaker, which I was present just now, also joining us from Norway. Um, so, and then we have invited our science, so our research institutions, the CSIR is present with us today. Um, we have the University of Western Cape, the University of Stellenbosch, um, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Economic Development and Tourism, and our local local economic development managers, because we felt that the message today was important um, to have those present. And of course, we have our regular attendees, which we really appreciate your support from the area and, and business community of Saldana Bay. Before I take any more time, um, our esteemed guests, thank you very much for uh, taking up the opportunity. Togazi normally runs every second Thursday of the month, but we made a special dispensation of having it on Wednesday morning in order to catch um, Ursa Kuren um, from uh, Norway because she's traveling and um, will be leaving, we'll be able to make tomorrow. Um, just a brief introduction, Ursa is a mother of three boys and a grandmother of one girl. Um, she has a PhD from the University of Tromsø, Norway in biology. And she's now the special advisor of the Research Council of Norway for the last 14 years, and with this responsibility for the clustering program. So the cluster program in Norway is a joint effort between three governmental agencies, the Research uh, Council of Norway, Innovation Norway, and SIVA, which she will elaborate on in a presentation what those different departments do and how they are supporting the structure. And I think that you'll understand that sort of some of the guests that you've invited to also match that. And then um, the program is funded by two ministries, so the Ministry of Trade, Industries and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Local Government and Modernization. And just um, a, a very impressive uh, mini bio now about her professional accolades. Um, she's been CEO in a regional development agency. She's been a manager of a private university college. She's been a senior advisor at Statistics Norway, researcher at the University of Tromsø Norway, and headed, um, head of all horticulture department at the University of Saskatchewan in Canada, and has been a visiting scientist at the University of Hokkaido in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ursa. I hope I pronounced it correctly. 
Fair enough. <laughs> Good morning. What am I doing here? You know, uh, there is a special agreement between uh, Southern Africa and Norway uh, to do research and innovation. And we have to fill it with some content. So we just had the arranged uh, science week in Pretoria and Cape Town last week. There was approximately 60, 70 people from Norway coming and approximately 350 from uh, South Africa. And we had a couple of your ministers, Minister of Education, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, were visiting us, together with uh, our own ambassador. That was one reason why I'm here, this is Science Week. Approximately two months ago, one month and a half, two months ago, I had two visitors in my office in Oslo, Norway. That was Doug and Laura from Saldana Bay. They were trying to learn a little bit more about the clustering. And then we found out, wow, why shouldn't I come to Saldana Bay? And I did. And I've been here almost a week now. We have been touring around. We have been visiting Darling, tasted 12 different kinds of wines, two gins, brandy, olives, chocolate. We went to the Fossil Park, and we visited two or three churches, and we had a hell of a time. It's been great being here. So, I'm going to talk to you about our experience with clusters. First, some definition. What do we mean when we are talking about clusters? In Norway, this is what we mean. It's, it's a co concentration, an agglomeration of businesses related to competence institutions like universities, university colleges, research institutes. And they are connected to complementarity and or common interests and needs. And in, in Norway, there is no cluster without a university or a research institute connected to it. And I understand there were some people from the university here in the audience. Is there? Mm -hmm. No, not arrived yet? Okay. Because universities are really, really important. There is no cluster without a university as a partner. The businesses can be in the same value chain or have common technologies like biotechnology or work processes uh, like systems engineering, for example, uh, design thinking would be some examples. And we differ uh, from cluster to cluster project because a cluster project is the organized and focused work to accelerate the development in the cluster. And that is what we are supporting with governmental money. So a cluster can be anything, anywhere, and does not necessarily have anything to do with Innovation Norway or the Research Council or SIVA, but the cluster project does. And then the cluster organization is the judicial institution that is established to operate the cluster activities. Uh, you will find in the literature, it's all, all call, called the facilitator uh, at many times, and we use that. Uh, sometimes facilitators, sometimes project management, and sometimes a cluster organization. It's the same thing. It was mentioned already uh, who are supporting this. In the cluster program, we are trying to link policies so that's why there are two ministries involved, trade industry and fisheries on the one side, and the local government and modernization on the other. And to operate this, there are three innovation agencies who are linking roles and resources. And this is quite special, even in Norway. Uh, this is, the cluster program is the only program in Norway that is owned by these three agencies. So this is also a special thing about it. Who are we? Well, you can see the different roles we have. Innovation is mainly supporting companies and networks. SIVA is an infrastructure uh, agency. They have the same owner, uh, Ministry of Trade, Industry and Fisheries. And then the Research Council, where I come from, of course, as it is in the name already, we are occupied with research and research-based innovation, and we are owned by another ministry 
the Ministry of Education and Research. So the three of us are working together at different roles and trying to support the clusters in this. So, jumping into uh, the cluster program, the ultimate goal is increased competitiveness. That's why we are doing this. And to support the long-term collaboration between companies, R&D institutions, educational institutions. And I will certainly come back to this educational part because that is really important in the cluster program. And our main goal from the Research Council is coming from research to invoice. This is the program outline. It looks maybe a little bit confusing and I hope you can see it. I use different colors to, to support uh, the view of the three levels. Um, the first one, the pink, pinkish one, is called ARENA. And you know, cluster, cluster development, that really takes time. In Norway, we have already worked with this for approximately 16 years to come where we are today. And it started out at the Research Council in 1999-2000, uh, where we tried to stimulate the cooperation between small, medium-sized businesses and universities. And then we found out we need to have innovation in Norway along the line because they are st uh, supporting uh, the small businesses. So then we made this arena. Uh, there were some pilot projects in 2000, 2001, and then this program, arena program, was launched in 2002. And this is the uh, cluster, clusters for immature initiatives. They are regionally positioned, um, very often like here in Saldana Bay, like. Uh, Fisheries here could be one cluster uh, to compare what we mean about the arena clusters in Norway. Uh, they are supported for three years and they it can be prolonged for another two years if they are really working good. And uh, you can see they have approximately four to five million RAN in support yearly. And at any time we have approximately 20 of these running at at any time, and you will see who they are. Then, 10 years ago, we found out that we should have another level uh, for those more mature clusters, those who had already been in ARENA for three or five years, uh, and have developed their own national position, strong national position. They will have support for five to ten years, depending if they have been in the arena before or not. If they've been in the arena, they will have another five years. If they have not been part of the arena clusters, they will have ten years. And you can see the amount they are supported with is almost doubled from arena, close to 10 million rand a year. And at any time, we will have ten of these clusters. And then what do you do <laughs> when the first national level clusters have reached a 10 year period? That was a big discussion. What do we do then? Do you just close the door, leave them by themselves? No. We try to take the best ones, the largest ones, the ones with the global position and support them further on. You know, there are restrictions to how, how much you can support one applicant or one cluster. We are, in fact, due to European laws, we, we can only support them for 10 years. But I'll tell you later on what we did to come around this. <laughs> so, three years ago, we developed what we call the global centers of expertise. And they are for the real mature clusters. They have been working together for 10, 15, maybe 20 years. They are global runners. And I think you might recognize them when you see them later on. And they will have additional support for another 10 years. So you can see, if you started back 15 years ago, they first could have the support in the arena, then they sent their application for the, the Norwegian centers of expertise on the national level, and when they reach that limit, they can apply to get to the global centers of expertise program. But just these days, during these coming few months, we are discussing the strategies of this cluster program. We are not sure if this is the best way to do it. 
and we always try to improve. So right now, right now, these days, uh, we are discussing if this global center of expertise, the yellow ones, the most mature, the most global ones, if it is right to support them with uh, governmental money. These clusters are so strong, maybe they should be on their own and not use public money for their support. So, we'll see. We don't know yet if there will be another call for this level. We have annual competitions, open com competitions. We have a call and it's based on five criteria and there is external evaluation by experts. And here you can see the selection proce process. I will not go into details to it, it would take too much. But it's a call, it's always in the beginning of January. And uh, we invite all initiatives and already running clusters to develop their draft, project draft, about three to four pages, and send them in to us. And the program management will give a feedback on this and invite the best ones to send the full application. And by having that kind of process, we reduce the number of applicants with about 50%, which is good. It's good for us, we don't have to read that many applications, and it's good for the applier who will not win uh, the selection in any way, because there are so few coming through every year. And you can see the selection criteria there. We are looking into the resources, like how many businesses, what kind of universities, colleges, educational institutions are involved. We are looking at the position of uh, the cluster and also the potential. The potential is really important. They must describe their goals and strategies and describe their ownership, leadership and their interactions. And they must show an implementation plan. So after uh, we have received these applications, we have expert panels, they are external, they come from different countries in Europe, real cluster experts, four of them reading all the applicants, applications. And also we have sector experts, like two sector experts who read the applications. So if it's an application in oil, we'll have an oil expert, if there is something in agriculture, we'll have an agricultural expert, and so. So six external experts will, uh, will read all these uh, applications. And we have a board that is taking the final decisions, and then, of course, there is the implementation. And last year, we did not have a call for this global level, but we had 10 applications for the national level, and one winner, and we had 22 applications for the arena and three winners. So you see, it's a really hard competition, this. And it should be like that, because it's uh, the quality, the quality of the cluster, the cl uh, quality of the product management, quality of the research institution involved, that's what counts. The whole period takes about six months, from call in January and to implementation can start six months. Arena supported clusters. So these are the ones running right now. Some have been already running for four to five years, and some are just fresh, started three months ago. And you can see there are all sorts of branches. We have a fashion cluster, we have a solar energy cluster, and they are in fact cooperating with South Africa uh, on research. We have plastics, we have a cod cluster, we have several in oil and gas, uh, design, tunnel, so you can see it's a wide variety uh, depending on what they are uh, working on regionally. These are the NCEs, the, the Norwegian centers, the middle level with a strong national position. And here you can see we have aquaculture, three in aquaculture. Uh, one is called aquaculture, the other is aquatech, and then we have the seafood innovation cluster. And uh, we have a really good cancer cluster. This is, in fact, the world-leading cancer cluster. And they are uh, cooperating heavily with uh, Germany, France, and the United States. Unfortunately, not in South Africa yet. 
Culinology, do you know what that is? Anybody? Eating. Eating, right, right. Yeah, this is how, this is how <laughs> industrialized food, how should it taste? So this is research on that. And you know that in Norway we have uh, the world's best chefs. They are winning every year, for three or four consecutive years now, the Norwegian chefs have been winning this world sh championship in cooking, which is great. These are the global ones. We have only three. We did not have a call this year. This is in, they are called Blue Maritime, Subsea and Nude. And they are all in your sector, gas, oil and gas. Blue Maritime is long, has a long tradition on shipbuilding. And I know uh, we saw a couple of ships in Cape Town that were built in Norway. The subsea cluster is, is uh, as you can see, below surface. They are uh, extracting oil. You know, all the oil industry in Norway is maritime. There is no oil or gas production on land. Everything is offshore. And uh, the subsea, they are operating on the, on the floor, the sea floor. And the last one, the most southernmost one, is Nuda, that is, they are drilling experts. And they are looking into cooperation with South Africa for drilling and mining, using the equipment from oil to mining in South Africa. And also, which is even more interesting, is that they are using the oil technology in medicine. They are using, we have something called pumps and pipes program. Imagine those huge pumps that they use in the oil installations. They are big as a quarter of this room. And they are minimizing it so that it fits into your veins and your heart. But it's exactly the same technology involved. So they are trying to like, cross-sector uh, innovation, which you find very, very interesting. These are the challenges that McKinsey reported about four years ago that we would uh, have in the future and that they, uh, we would have to, to cope with. But in fact, the future is already here, as you know. We have already the mobile internet, Automation is really taking over uh, in industry. In Norway, we are <laughs> no, no workers anymore. Everything is automized. Internet of Things is really coming up now. Two of the clusters in Norway are working very hard on this. The cloud technology, you know, it's all already there, and so on and so forth. To meet this, it's unthinkable without innovation and research involved, right? And it is even more unthinkable that these, this research and this innovation can be done without education, right? So education is really important, education, research, innovation, and then meet the disruptive technologies. And one way to deal with this is, of course, because I'm the speaker, cooperating through clusters. The cluster support, where to spend the money. This is what you, they, you can use the, the public money for. Cluster development, like running the cluster, having a project manager, uh, arranging meetings like this, go to conferences, uh, making uh, logos, whatever. That is the main running the, of, the, of the cluster. And then they can use money for innovation. They can use it for cluster to cluster cooperation, like projects cluster to cluster, and for competence building. And the innovation part and the competence part, those are a must. It's mandatory to work with innovation and competence in the clusters. And what in the competence area can they use the money for? Well, Analysis, mapping, international cooperation, which is very important, dissemination and implementation. For example, of new classes, <coughs> new courses, new masters, new PhD studies, support doctorates, whatever. 
International cooperation is also very, very important, and it's getting more important uh, on, on the higher levels. Uh, not that important in the arena, more important in the Norwegian centers of expertise, and a must on uh, the global level. And we have a special program who support this cooperation. And due to this uh, deal, this agreement that uh, Norway have with South Africa, on the last call on what is called INTPART, International Partnership Building, we had 11 applications with cooperation with South Africa. And I think five of them will win. So we are getting there, slowly. Some examples. Um, I have picked some examples that should be relevant to you. Um, this is the Blue Maritime, remember? The one up north, uh, building ships. They have uh, financed five academic professors and ten industrial professors. They have already developed four master programs in design and management and simulation. And they have built a fascinating simulator for training on maritime personnel from all over the world. You can sit there with your joysticks and maneuver big ships, uh, trying to get ships close to oil installations offshore. And you know, they are training personnel from any country in the world. Uh, and they use it also for training the, 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 the steermans, those who will steer the ships, uh, before even a new ship is built. So in the moment when the ship is ready and they are going for the first sail, those who steer the boat already know how to do this, even if they have not set foot on the real ship yet. And they have, in, the, in this place, they have harbors from all over the world. So I tried this, just for the fun of it. Standing there and trying to maneuver first one ship into Singapore. Ah, uh -uh, that was not successful. <laughs> but then I tried in a storm. It was visualizing a storm. And I was running a big supply ship close to the oil installation. And you could e feel the waves when you were going there. Even I stood still just like this, but I could feel the waves. And trying to get this ship close to the oil installation. Wow, it didn't work. That was a humongous crash. But it was great fun. Great fun. Here's the other one. This is the Nuda, the drilling uh, cluster. They have been trying for years to get education in mechatronics. That is so important for this cluster. So they have been pushing and pushing and pushing at the university, who is also a member of this cluster to put up uh, education in mechatronics. And finally, they su succeeded. So now the University of Agder is running bachelor, uh, master's, and PhD in mechatronic. So by the push of the industry, they are now running a university study that is world class. It's really good. And uh, they are starting very early, you can see on the right hand side there. They are starting with the kids in the kindergarten to uh, get them interested into mechatronic, using the mechatronics innovation lab. The subsea cluster, they have uh, established a bachelor and master in subsea technology together with the university and the university college in Bergen. And uh, they have uh, ROE, remote operated vehicles, uh, an education at the Maritime Te Technical College. And this is uh, a cut from uh, the, the web, the, the homepage for this subsidy just two weeks ago. And they have all the time news about competence. So they are working all the time to improve all, all, all aspects of, of education. So they have student projects to increase innovation. They have online. Uh, subsea awareness and training for those who cannot attend any classes. And you can, for example, hire an industry master student. You can also hire a professor um, for uh, a special length of time. So they're all really 
going into this competence building. It is so important for the clusters. How do we work when there is no university? You see, this, uh, this is an example. There are two examples in Norway like this, only two. But here I think there might be something for you to pick up. Maybe it will work here. This is an example from the ARENA cluster, the regional one. It's in oil gas supply industry, just like most of you. But they deliver education in many branches, and the closest university is 250 kilometers away. The industry there decided they must have education on bachelor, master, and doctorate level, just to increase their competitiveness in their industry. Otherwise, they will be flat out. They will be competed out. So they decided, together with the SIVA, this agency that also owns the, the cluster program, together with the county, together with the local municipality, the local industry, and one or two or three or ten or hundred universities and university colleges, they built this organization where, which they call the Campus Helgeland. Helgeland is the name of the, the area. You reacted to the number of universities? I said a hundred, and there is no university there. That's because they buy education from any university on the globe that are needed for this cluster. So there are universities from England there, you know, um, MIT in the United States, Stanford is there, Denmark is there, whatever is needed. They are going to start now a cooperation with Singapore. And this is not a big community. Like there are 45,000 people living there. But the industry is so important. And what is funny, I grew up in this, in this uh, town, 45,000 people. And it just, it looks so much the same as Soldano Bay. I'm almost back to my childhood going around here because of the, the, the seal works. And I recognize all the, the red buildings, uh, the red trees, the red bushes, uh, red stuff running down uh, the walls uh, on your houses because everything comes from the steelwork. It was just like that when I grew up. I had to turn 16 years old before I knew that the birch has a white stem. I thought it was red. So it was only when I left this area um, for, for a, a holiday that I realized, no, the, the birch stem is white, it's not red. So, so in that respect, it's been really nice to be here. So this, this science park, every year, with no university, there are, they are educating 400 full-time students. They have additional 400 part-time students and approximately 2,000 participating in courses. And there is only 45,000 people living there. So those people you see up there, they are, they are managers. They are not giving any education. None of them have the authority to do that. So they are managing and brokering education. And those who attend these studies, they will not have taken these studies, because then they will have to leave, they have to travel, leave the family. Maybe many of them have their own work in this industry, and they had to quit the work and go for, for a few years studying. No, they can have the work and the studies. The mom can be at home, be at work, and also study. So that is also why they have, you can see on the bottom here, they are doing anything from robotics, nursing, leadership, and whatnot. It's really, really, really uh, successful, this kind of thing. No teachers involved. The teachers are either coming for visits and giving their lectures, or it's on a real-time video. So, cluster impact. Why are we working with these clusters? 
We have seen, experiencing 16 years of cluster work, that cluster initiatives are important in regional and national innovation strategies. In fact, all the counties need to have their own research strategy on a county administration level. And what we see is that most counties are picking up the cluster strategies as their strategy. So you have a cluster, they have been running for some years, it's important to the county, very much so important for the municipality. They develop their strategies and then the counties steal this <laughs> strategy and put it into their strategy. But that is good because then it's a line between what is actually working and what the strategies, political strategies are on the county level. So that works excellently. The clusters are drivers for new education in colleges and universities, as you have seen some examples on. And the clusters are drivers for research in companies. That we have seen at the Research Council. After we started this cluster program, I think uh, we have increased our, the number of applications to our institution with at least three times. There is always being done evaluations and research on what we are doing. Like, is public money working? Uh, are we just putting lots of money into something that we don't have any outcome on? And Statistics Norway has just published uh, a, a really big support, and it states that the companies who are members of the cluster perform better. Statement. And locally, there is a growing awareness in the business community to form partnerships. And there is a growing willingness to invest in cluster development. We see it on the number of applications that we get at any time, and we meet it out in uh, the strategies, the county strategies. So, finally, does public money help? This is from uh, this report. We have, you see the word skattefun on the, the left side there. Skattefun is a, it's a tax deduction scheme that we have. It has been really successful. Uh, companies who want to do research, they can deduct 20% of their budget for the research they are doing, getting that refunded the year after they finish this. And they can, can uh, apply to up as much as 40, yeah, close to 40 million rand for each project. And that would, then 20% of that would be deducted. And if you put 1 million from this Scottifum, tax deduction scheme, you will gain 1.2 up to 1.7 man labor year. So you will almost get twice as much. And the annual value creation will increase to 1.8. 1,800,000. What they also found out is that it has to be a substantial amount of money and with that, this is approximately um, 2 million 500 rand. Above that gives the best result. But this is not uh, calculated according to the value of the money. It's just Norwegian money put into uh, South African money. So it will probably be less here, about 1.5 maybe. But what is um, comparable is that we will see a 7% net return on the investment of public money for research. Uh, is that good? No, no, we think it is good. We think it, it makes it worthwhile running these uh, kind of schemes and, um, and programs. The cluster program is very popular by the politicians in Norway. The Prime Minister almost never gives a speech without mentioning the clusters. And so is the Minister of Industry and Fisheries, always referring to the clusters. But we don't get that much support. 
uh, for money. So there is not really a connection about how important they think it is and the money we get for it. But it helps, and that is the main thing. Okay, I hope I gave you a few ideas that you might uh, pick up. Uh, you can have my references there, and you can contact me at any time. Uh, you can see the homepage of uh, the RCN, and also the homepage for the, the clusters. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I normally do the welcoming. My name is Abigail Murray. I do enterprise development for the Sultana by IDZ. Um, and my job is basically just to thank Arce for the wonderful insight that she's brought to us. In addition to our previous session that we had on, on clustering, this time it was just a Norwegian perspective. Um, and as Benny said, the reason why we had this was with the idea of possible replication. So we had all our partners here today. Um, and then to thank all of you for attending the Tagazi sessions. I mean, we had the sessions monthly um, at the same venue. And um, we foresee that we will continue having it um, next year. So thank you, uh, everyone, for attending. And we hope that you've also gained as much insight on the industry as we have and um, continue to grow with the Sultana by IDZ going forward. Thank you so much. Um, the next hour is for networking. Our guest speaker, Innovation Norway, um, our LED unit, the CSIR is here. So try and gain as much information before you leave. Thank you so much.